Hi, I'm Cam Franklin, a retired Coast Guard officer and SAM's accredited marine surveyor with over 40 years of experience in the maritime and diving industry. I've amassed literally thousands of photos of all the bad things I've found on boats during my career as a marine surveyor. So what we're going to do today is take a look at some of my favorites. We're going to take a look at each picture. We're going to discuss why they're evil. Evil! And we're going to discuss what you need to do to correct them. So hop in, buckle up, keep your arms and legs inside the car at all times as we take a carnival-like ride tour through the cavalcade of owner-induced perversions that I like to call Captain Frank's Sea Chest of Horror. Sea Chest of Horror. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the drain for an LPG storage locker. This is where your tank is stored. At the bottom of your propane locker, it's got to have a vent that goes directly overboard. The problem with this installation is it has a, uh, a shower sump uh, drain pump teed into the hose so that it can utilize the same through hole for an overboard discharge. Uh, per ABYC recommendations, that's American Boat and Yacht Council, the vent has to uh, be a dedicated vent, meaning that it can't have any T's or breaks in the hose coming from the bottom of the propane locker directly overboard. The reason for this, of course, is that if there was a, uh, a leak in the propane locker, a uh, tank failed or hose ruptured or whatever, then the escaping propane should flow directly overboard. The problem with this installation is that uh, escaping propane rather than flowing overboard, it could flow back into the uh, the hose going to the shower sump pump and flow back into the vessel's interior. Now you've got a bilge filled with uh, propane that could be ignited from a spark from a bilge pump starting or anything along those lines. So what we have here is a seacock installation that employs uh, two short sections of piping and a 90 degree elbow between the seacock and the through hull. Problem is, is that this introduces a possible point of failure uh, that is not protected by the seacock. In other words, if the piping fails or it cracks off, uh, then you have no seacock there to prevent water from entering the vessel. The seacock should be mounted directly to the through hull. Uh, that way you have no additional points of failure uh, that are not protected by the seacock. Uh, this photo here shows another example of it. Uh, you've got the through hole coming up to a T and then it splits off and now you've got two seacocks but neither one of them could prevent water from entering the vessel if, uh, for example, the T fitting failed at the through hole. Arm uh, type or flapper type bilge pump float switches must be securely mounted and installed clear of wires, hoses, and other obstructions that can impede operation of the floating arm, or the flapper switch as it's called. Uh, they should also be oriented with the switch aligned fore and aft and the flapper pointed toward the stern. This is especially important on power boats. During jackrabbit takeoffs, surging bilge water can damage the flapper mechanism, even ripping it apart in some cases as shown here. Installing them close to a bulkhead or frame also helps protect the switch from the torrent of water. Uh, enclosed switches eliminate this worry, but can also be more difficult to inspect and test. So the owner of this vessel needed AC power on board, but he didn't want to fuss with any of those frilly add-ons like plugs, breaker panels, and permanent wiring. His solution was to simply take a 30 to 15 amp adapter, cut the end from the three plug extension cord, then tape the wires to the prongs at the 15 amp adapter end. No need for that fancy electrical grade tape either. Uh, while quick and easy, this approach pretty much defies any standard or recommendation uh, regarding AC shore power installations known to man. It goes without saying, but here we go. Uh, this type of MacGyverism, when you're talking about AC shore power, uh, can result in anything from shock hazards, fire, death. Pretty much all the bad things an improperly installed AC power system can bring to the table. 